started with 50 summers, hundreds of group stage matches, 45 single elimination matches. Two champions arose from those tournaments, all pointing to this moment. 14 summoners fight for the right to be called the VBCs, one above all. Welcome to Vegas Battle World. Hey, welcome back to the final match of week one in Vegas Battle World, where we will be crowning the champion. Above all, if you're not familiar with the tournaments, they had to qualify for this. We've done three tournaments, kept totals, stats, the whole thing. Adam did it for us. And these are the top 16 players in all of the VBC ratings as we move to this final tournament, Battle World. I am joined today by my co-host, none other than top 16 rated player himself, just unable to compete in this tournament for personal reasons. Thank you so much for being here, Campo. Hey, what's going on, Vega? Looks uh, like we got another afternoon matchup or morning or evening, depending uh, where you live, actually, I'm saying that. <laughs> but yeah. We are much like Andrew Stog Spooky. We have gone worldwide, and this will be an international match. For sure. Yeah. You got to bring this worldwide. When you got something this, you got a product this good. You got to do it uh, for everyone. Just kind of setting it up because the competitors are looking to get started right away. As you can see from the screen right there, Tom Jarvis has made the decision to screen share via discord. That means that we're not going to be able to line these up perfectly. It's going to be a little bit different than some of the other matches you've seen. But for those of you who've seen this before, you know you end up with a superior experience than if the person had streamed via YouTube. And also, once you get used to the timing of it, it actually can be very fun. So uh, get with us or stick with us through this. Ask your questions if you can. Camp and I will do our best to commentate on the match while also, of course, looking at the chat. There's Andrew right there worldwide all day, baby. You know it. Uh, what's up, everybody? O's fan, Jason Russian, Ted, uh, Zed, Laser, Yusafa, the man himself. The man himself. He drives his own yacht. Nanya, Nick, Tilatam, Bitter Steel, VBC Star, Tilatam, Danny Moonstar looks ridiculously. Ooh, is, is Danny Moonstar, is that for, uh, for MCOC? What is, what is that for? I would, I request elaboration. Uh, and card 64. Let's go. Let's go. And as you know, I will adjust the aspect ratios as we get these fights started. This is group B in battle world. The, uh, the week two matchups have already been decided for the other groups. They're planning them. I'm hoping we get those started as soon as tomorrow, if not Friday. And then group B's matchups after we know the outcome of this one, we will get to it. There's only three competitors in each group, which means these group stage matches are that much more meaningful Four competitors will advance the winners of each group, and then two of the second place competitors will advance to the Deadlands bracket, the Constellation bracket. And we have some fun on how we're going to decide who's going to do that, but those, that will not be revealed until we are at that stage. Felgano, Nick136, Matt Hill, Christian Lopez, what is up, my friends? All right. Campo, what are we seeing? We've got bands here of, oh, DLL does not want to deal with Tom's Killmonger. That makes a lot of sense. Spot, Joe, get him off the board. We've got Longshot, Ma, and Valkyrie on the other side. And while I turn it over to Campo, I will look up who their pre-fight bans were. Yeah, absolutely. Um, interesting. I know that Tom has a, a long shot himself um, at rank five, yet he is still banning long shot. The Killmonger... I think makes sense. He's going to take a long time to kill in this type of meta uh, spot. It's just an absolute nuke. And Joe Fix It is a really good two way. So, um, yeah, we'll see how those strategies play out. It's definitely different looking bands than yesterday, though. You know what? Uh, I've been doing the chat because I know some of the competitors are, are in watching the stream as well. Does anyone know the Toms and DLL's bands? I thought I had them, and I'm realizing I might not. Well, now that I said that out loud, I'm sure long shot was the five, the rank five long shot of TJ was probably taken out of his deck. That that makes more sense now why he would also ban long shot. Yeah, it does. That's, that's kind of part of what was uh, causing me a little confusion. So if you're not familiar with how we're doing this week one of Battle World, the number one seed, which would be the, the top uh, seed in each group, was able to uh, pick three bands. 
that it's and it, it was unilateral, meaning they were not allowed to be in their opponent's deck. They just couldn't, but you could have them in your own. Then the number three seed, in this case being DLL, was able to respond with that strategically once he knew the bans and banned two champions that also being unilateral, not allowed to be in Tom Jarvis's deck. And as Campos pointing out, TJ does have a rank five um, long shot who he does phenomenal things with, kind of making sense that DLL might want to get rid of that champion. Near he one? is kind of a, yeah. a menace when there's so many buffs. Like you know, the re any basically you can get your five bad karma plus a regen buff. You know, so so it's just going to be a quick fight for a long shot on offense. Absolutely, and I want to make this clear right now. I, I like to make predictions on how I think so, things are going to go. I agree with Nirwin. The gentleman is very uh, smart. He's guaranteeing someone from SSX will win this matchup. I like it. I think we can go with that with 100 percent positivity here. So the first matchup, we have a dimensional being. We talked about this yesterday as well, that uh, Fanta, as many people call him, is a dimensional being, which means Blade has his full danger sense. And then below, Spider-Ham against a Mystic, seeing how these power stings are going to be able to get him down. It's looking pretty close so far. It's always a. It, it takes a while to get used to the the streams being a little bit off. Uh, they're actually not that far. It looks like they're only about six seconds, uh, but yeah. it, it is it is kind of create a little like I, you're not totally sure who's winning. It looks like TJ is going to go ahead and pull that one off though. Spider Ham TJ was the main voice behind Spider Ham needs to be put in the tier above all for dual threats and the latest battlegrounds rankings that we put out. So. Uh, showing why he felt that way, and it, it looks deserved to me. Absolutely, that was that was very quick. Um, you know a little bit more about Spider Ham than I do. I've actually never ranked mine up, but it looks like when everything lines up and you get the power stings when you need them to, it's a really good counter for Mystics in this meta. Absolutely, Spider Ham is phenomenal. TJ it made a lot of sense, right? It, it, Spider Ham's a difficult defender as well, right? Even like I, I enjoy fighting him with like Shang Chi. I've gotten very used to him. I think because I had to fight him a lot, maybe in war or something like that. But his ability to just kind of sit there. I think he has two taunts, if I remember correctly. He can also go uh, with that instant evade, and you can just sit there and just you can just sit there and put the power stings on the opponent. And then when his spider sense is getting high, if you land your heavy. I think you remove two of your own spider sense, but the reason you want to do that is that can allow your power sings to just reapply. And as heavy really to me feels like it's often the animations and the spacing allow you to land it quite frequently. He's really tailored for this. And obviously he came out, I would imagine, well before they thought of Battlegrounds. Uh, but he's one of those champions that just really seamlessly fits into it. Awesome, man. So I think we saw the glancing was just a bit of an issue, even against Blade. Nobody's immune to glancing, and, and that's sort of what made the fight not go well for DLL. However, we're seeing a rematch of his most recent war video where he used Quicksilver to take an America Chavez <laughs> boss. Uh, obviously, with the withers that he gets so easily, it completely closes her dimensions. So it's a good matchup. However, it still is masochism, and all these debuffs are just going to be applying regen. So the question is, is he going to be able to burst her down with one giant whiplash? Uh, I have a question Wood for is you. is doing quite well down there. Yes, I have a question for you on that. Uh, I was not. I was looking at the chat and some other things. Was TJ using the miss mechanic of Hood to land intercepts? Is, is that how he handled that fight so well? It looks like it, yeah and just nuked him down at the end. Um, but yeah, if you do intercept, you won't glance. That's in his kit. So I think that was part of his strategy. Yeah, because if you nullify Fate Seal or any of those things, Ant-Man's armor ups, I believe they just become passives. Uh, I'd be interested if anyone in the chat knows Phantom Man a little bit better and can, can tell us what they think. And yes, TJ is a beast. He's, in hindsight, when I reviewed the tournaments to kind of do the draft show for this one, uh, it was very clear to me you know, FinTech won two tournaments, Legacy won the other one. And TJ, with just something like one fight going a different direction, I really believe could have won two tournaments. Like he was on the precipice of it. So the skills are there. The skills, the the deck, the whole thing is definitely there. Um, Nick is saying he cycled SB2s with the Power Steel and Mystic Dispersion. Okay. 
Yeah, having the extra regen buff plus the armor ups and everything, even though they turn into passives, it, it's just a, a frenzy for uh, for Hood's kit, for sure. And this this is something I predicted when we did the show um, that you know the science champions that that DLL is sort of typically known for using, like Mister Fantastic and Quicksilver in this case, it really they do get hurt by masochism. There aren't a lot of science champions that can really cut through this meta. Um, and Quicksilver was just a little too slow there. Uh, so we're still just getting warmed up here. They're kind of feeling each other out. Uh, but TJ just had a pretty massive performance on both of those fights to get things going today. Uh, make sure you support the competitors. The links to all the champions are in the description. They run phenomenal channels. These are channels I watch to get better at the game while being entertained. Uh, Bitter Steel is explaining the fight a little bit more. He's adding on to what Nick said. He said, Hood also works well because he gets around the damage cap of Ant-Man with all his bullets counting as separate detonations. My very smart play by TJ. No surprise that Nick and Bitter Steel are also aware of it being how smart they are. If I haven't said hello to Felgenos, what is up, my friend? I'm glad you could be here being as well. Uh, and Felgenos, what if it's a tie and then the game permanently shuts down? Well, then it becomes a powerlifting competition, of course. We'll get their bench press. <laughs> we'll, we'll get out the barbell, the dumbbell, the whole thing. And uh, we'll see who can lift more. You know how we do these things. So I just got a little bit of intel uh, from somebody that TJ has banned Tigra, Kate, and Absorbing Man from DLL. So those are the three. We're not sure of DLL's bans, but I, I, we assumed it was Longshot and somebody else. So that is the latest info about who is permanently banned. Uh, that is awesome. And, and that's ringing a bell. I think TJ had told me he was probably going to do that. that that's, that's ringing a bell. Uh, I mean, you know, that's got to be kind of a bit uh, satisfying, I believe is what the kids say these days. You're going up against a man who designs champions for uh, MCOC and you're like, I'm going to ban them both. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's a good strategy, and DLL is obviously a, a very adept Tigra player as well. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it's a little bit of a gut punch. It's like you're you're designing these champions, and then uh, they're being taken away from you. That's yeah. just you know a low blow from uh, from TJ. And TJ's like, yo, you thought we were gonna have fun? No, sir, we are not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, uh, did you see any changes with the bands? I'm busy having fun with the chat. And it looks like uh, Longshot, Valkyrie, and Ma stayed consistent, as well as Spot, Killmonger, yeah. and uh, and Joe Fix It. As the match goes on, I wonder if if Joe will still continue to be banned. I, I really do believe in those first two. I'm not 100% sure on Joe um but we'll we'll kind of just see how tj continues to play i mean that spider ham almost seems like a worse threat than the joe to me at this juncture so far yeah that's a good point we'll see if dl makes a trend uh, a move there i want to see how many we'll try to pay attention for the next time how many skill champions dl has in his deck that could maybe handle joe well if joe gets put on defense i know i've personally struggled with him a few times when he's placed and i don't have a champion and get rid of all those debuffs Nick and Nick is asking you to immediately take <laughs> that back. <laughs> <laughs> well, well put, Nick. Well put. <laughs> uh, so, do we have a double double future Ant Man uh -oh. on both sides? It looks like uh, okay. DL is back. I got a little worried that DL had to may have had to uh, step aside for a minute. Mm hmm. But we're going to see future amp, and again, I don't think I see Hood uh, there to take advantage of it. Wicked. Now, again, I want to see how this works out because these guys know what they're doing. But won't Wiccan's neutralize not really work against future amp? Man, he's just going to pull up the um, the passive sh passive uh, armor up instead. Um, I. I'm not sure if that's for neutralize. We'll have to see. I think it may only be for stagger and nullify, but we'll we'll know very quickly. I'm also learning on this matchup. Yeah. 
yeah, he's got the two passive uh, armors there. And so it's just going to be a glancing fest, I, I believe. You Obviously, there's other ways around this, but um, I don't think it's going to go well up there. We'll see. Yeah. It looks like you still get the incinerates. Um, but yeah, looks like a, a bit of an input issue or, or a mistake was made as well. But also, uh, Jessica Jones just went red. And I don't think Kate's going to be able to do much here because of the investigation getting out of hand yeah. and the unstoppable. So this this is going to be an interesting one and how this one pans out. I th if, if DLL can just sort of chip away, uh, there's a chance that he can still come out here. Obviously, he has no idea what's happening in TJ's world, but he did just take a big blow from Jessica. Yeah. And it looks like the damage capabilities of Kate are just going to uh, overpower, overwhelm Jessica there at the, towards the end. And TJ, I think, will come away with this one. And and the glancing. This is what we're talking about. This is Ant featuring Ant-Man, mm -hmm. again, why he was also moved to the top of the dual threats because of the defender capabilities, the counters that he requires being brought in. And then, I mean, we haven't even seen him used offensively. I have a feeling we might. Definitely. He's already making an impact on this match. Yeah. He's just interfering with what you want Wiccan to do with his rhythm and occasionally your power's getting drained, the glancing, the regen, it's just kind of a lot. OG Highline comes in and lets his intentions be known. He's going for DLL. Thank you so much for the support, OG Highline, as always. Thank you. You know, uh, too, uh, we talked about this a lot in these tournaments. I, I don't, I obviously DLL wants to win this, this set in this game and, and, and the second set. I don't think he's worried, though. You know, obviously he'd rather be 1-1. 2-0, we've seen comebacks from that so many times. Momentum shifts can happen so frequently. It's that third one where I feel like it really makes a huge difference where you, you don't want to be down 3-0. I, I think this is far from over. Absolutely. And this game itself, I mean, that I think DLL had to know going into that, that Wiccan wasn't yeah. going to be the best option to win. He still has two more games here, you know, to try to win this set. So there, there is still an option. He has a good Havoc counter at this point. Um, Spider-Ham's going to be slower than he was against the Mystic when it comes to this thing. So we'll, we'll see how this all goes. Yeah, if TJ pull, if TJ pulls this one off, then I think Spider Ham gets promoted to the best champion in the game. He he's like <laughs> it's it goes yeah. Spider Ham, then Hercules, then maybe Ghost. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> absolutely. Uh, so DLL's in surging swarm. He's he's keeping on top of the you know when you when you fight havoc, you're baiting heavies anyway, so that helps ramp up your armors. And I think if he throws well this will kill him i was going to say he one more rotation will do it but he's already dead dl is on the board um cool collected the professor i think he wouldn't mind us calling him that uh and uh dot what <laughs> is spider ham's not already uh what's up dab carl who is carl who's this man named carl that is showing up in the chat how you doing messiah uh, Matt, we don't make tea. Yeah, you're right. Because TJ is so good, he might actually pull that off. And then we have to have, I have to put out a tier list <clears throat> telling people that Spider Ham is just slightly <laughs> above Hercules. I mean, the fact that he's gotten this far against Thing in a regen meta uh, is still pretty impressive, I think. And, <laughs> you know, he probably figured as a defender or an attacker in round three. Spider Ham didn't have a lot of use, so he was using him here as sort of a uh, maybe a, a strategy to just set up the third round. We'll have to see. Absolutely, a bit of a strategic throw there. As TJ's already immediately, you can see kind of the experience of TJ there. He's he immediately goes to start looking at the defenders, and I, I don't know if DL has done that yet. You know, so we'll he see. did scan it real quick. I remember, yeah. So DLL's probably yeah. got a plan. I'm interested to see where this goes. There's a there's a couple of ways it could go. 
Okay. Quicksilver is one of my least favorite champs to fight ever. Well, uh, so uh, it's going to show up in a very uh, come coming soon war video of mine. People often ask, you know, I put out those tier lists and people are like, is Dick Fury really still good? Are you sure, Vega? I don't think he's good anymore. And um, I'm pretty sure he's still excellent. I want to see how this goes here. I think this is a great matchup for Fury. Yes. And we just saw, again, one of the best players in the world in McLinks really struggle with a Quicksilver just treating Hercules like a punching bag. So it is yeah. a, never a sure thing against Quicksilver in his animations, but let's see how DLL pulls this off. I wonder if he's got uh, five out of five deep wounds on his BG's deck, because that is really the way to nuke down the fight. Um, he's an Avenger, of course, so you start off with five tactical charges, I think. So the evade is turned off right at the beginning, but Quicksilver is being so stingy. Yeah. And then that's special too. You just kind of have to take it. There's not really a way to evade it unless if you're like MSD reflexes. Yeah, I think the 15 seconds Quicksilver spent dancing because he could really come back and hurt. And then like you said, I, I don't know if he's got the deep wounds on. Uh, TJ's doing a nice job here. I Doom is obviously not a robot. Mm -hmm. And without recoil, he's just kind of keeping it at 10 spores and just laying on the, the pressure on I Doom. Uh, it looks like DLL does have some deep wounds here, though. That light blood is ticking for a lot, but between the masochism and just Quicksilver being Quicksilver, it's it's just going a little slow. Uh, I believe it's a rank four Nick. DLL gets that intercept. I think he needs He's that in terminal velocity. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Well done by uh, TJ with a non-ideal matchup down there. <clears throat> really interesting to see Omega Red in the deck without recoil. Um, the advantage, of course, being when he gets to 10 spores, he's guaranteed to turn off masochism. Uh, and that was enough to go up against the tech champion with the mutant uh, Omega Red there. Now, I, I, I am under the opinion. I mean, it's not a fact. I'm not sure on this. DL is not a fan of the tactic of letting your Nick kind of get beat and you go into the second life and, and end it. Um, I think if, I think if he, I think that might've been beneficial there, that tactic. I, I think he may have come away with the win there. I'm curious what you think. That's, um, that's always tough to pull off. I mean, we've seen some like Hail Mary miracles in this very tournament yeah. um, of that working. Um, you know, hindsight is twenty twenty. If he saw what he just saw now, I think maybe he might have reconsidered that. Oh, we, I was supposed to look for how many skill champions he has in his deck, and I remember just a few seconds too late. I'm not feel. I don't feel like I'm seeing a ton come up. No, there was the Nick, but uh, Valkyrie is banned. Well, I think this is the big one. I think this is the one where DL really needs to win this one. I think he needs to win this third set to have hopes to kind of push this a little farther. I think so. We saw the the similar setup yesterday between Bitter and Happy, uh, where you know Happy just came out pretty dominating for two rounds, and then um, Bitter was able to take that third round, and it really did shift the momentum so that so that it, it kind of went all the way to the sixth. I, I think we may be able to see that. I always trust DLL to to clutch when he needs to. What's He's up, got some Good champions so far. On my SSX buddies, poor Loki buddies, everyone in the chat. I, there's a lot going, so we're not gonna be able to say hello to everyone, but I appreciate y'all being here. Yeah, Captain Easy, that's something we talked a little bit about in the matchup with MP Blaze and McLinx. Is there's some players, you know, like you see Fintech right there, Bitter Steel, and TJ, right? Um, who I think were very able to very quickly transition their great war skills into great BG skills. I do think there is a difference having watched this a lot. Uh, there's McLinx right there as well, similar thing. 
where I think they're very, they're very quickly able to transition to taking these calculated risks. And then, and then I've watched them evolve over the year. We've done these tournaments go from taking calculated risks to what I feel is like actually creating the opportunities to even take those chances. The times that they're shaving off is pretty remarkable. And it's been like a second here, second there. And it's just where you're putting, it's just where you're spending your time. Uh, and so I think, yeah, DL is, I think still a bit more, of a phenomenal war player and you're right. So tactics like that, I don't think are going to come up as naturally for him. And I, I think we're seeing that. All right, here we go. Yep. Third game or set or whichever. Sorry. I don't remember. <laughs> yeah. I, I forget half the time too. The Everyone, third, third thing. The third, <laughs> the one with the three on it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There's only Pretty one good. number three up there. I see that OG Black Panther, so I wonder if, if Na is out there watching. Uh, the BP made it into the deck. OG Black Panther in this meta. I want to see this. And we've got double Rintra. And interesting. Yeah, that ends up going with Overseer. Did one of them passed on picking Scorpion for this? I am color me surprised scorpion can be slow but i i don't know maybe he's saving scorpion for somebody else um poison does work petrified does not work so if you stack enough poisons you can stop the healing in this meta so i have not seen i bomb on offense yet in your tournament i think so we'll see how this goes it looks is uh are these the weaknesses from I bomb or is DLL running that mastery? Uh, I can't think of what it's called. Uh, resonate. I think I think it's only on the blocked hits. So I think those are the ones from the kit. Okay. It is a lot of debuffs besides poison, so that you know the regens are going to keep coming on. Um, but you're seeing it's it's still ticking for a bunch and we just missed an acid burn cycle there so yeah. they're both going pretty slow um definitely not determined yet who's going to win this one like i bomb could definitely make a big comeback he still has the toxic aura up if he gets a nice acid burn here it could really take off a bunch of health deal may still come away now i think that i think that mistake right there is gonna uh, kind of put the final nail in the coffin the yeah. I think if ideally he waited for a renter to throw his special, he waits for that, then throws his SB2 so he can capitalize on the acid burn a bit more. Yeah, I agree there. Um Overseer just started going off too. Okay. So that I guess that's kind of how a lot of overseer fights look, where you, you don't have faith and then he just goes crazy. Um but yeah, it looked like DLL had a couple input mistakes. Um, just parries missing and you know i i can attest that when streaming when the phone's plugged in and hooked up a certain way it's it's easy to make little mistakes here and there but also the game itself is not a perfect game as we've talked about so yes you never know when you see stuff like that from such a good player i never really blame the player it's just, it's just a thing that happens absolutely absolutely uh, I think the MVP of this matchup so far has definitely been Phantom Man. We're going to see him again. I, I, we, every set, we've seen him at least once, and I think in the second, we saw him twice. He's been used defensively, offensively. It's almost like B. McGee knew what he was talking about when he told us how good Phantom Man was. I think so. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't pay a lot of attention to him until I finally pulled him the other day. And then when I started messing around with him, I was like, ah, now I get it. He <laughs> is he is quite a good tech champion. I'm, I'm excited to learn him a little bit more. See it now. So Scorpion, is that who DLL is going to settle on here? I, I know he ends up making a last second change and you'll see it uh, here. I assume that's a last second change. We all know uh, mm. that when it's that late, sometimes it's because the game just decided. Yeah. So obviously intercepts are somewhat part of the play style here with Black Panther. So I don't know if that's 
kind uh, of the plan. Yeah, that that's got to be it. Uh, very smart because that's part of Black Panther's play style. So he's entered uh, Panther's Might, I believe it's called. Kingpin is just such a solid champ for almost any Battlegrounds meta, I found. Like, if I had to pick a, a blind champion without knowing the meta, I'd almost always have Kingpin in my deck. And we're just seeing him uh, get through this first life of Nick pretty quickly. Not triggering any debuffs for the most part, just sticking to special twos. Yeah, really versus, playing it well against versus, Nick. The versatility, right? Having the ability of like, do you want me to do this via debuffs or do you want me just to go unstoppable? Either way, I will bash your brains in. It's up to you, <laughs> <laughs> right? Like, <laughs> nice use of the the heavy <laughs> in the corner there during the the stand up there. That was cool. That was an example of sort of a risky thing, like we were just talking about. But he. he Still sitting at pretty much a full yellow bar. I, I, you know, I think this was a really smart play by DLL. I think he's utilizing what he's got in his roster. I'm watching that uh, Nick it's sitting at SP3. Nick is just sitting at SP3. He's this a heavy. Oh my god! I hope everyone was watching the TJ side wow. of the screen right now. How did Nick not die with those heavies? He had a heal going, so I guess the heal is just that powerful. And then he resists oh. the heavies in the corner. Unbelievable. <laughs> wow, that was that was insane. And I, I mean, honestly, this TJ didn't know that he had the match if he had just been a little bit more patient. But that sometimes, you know, in these tournaments, you have to be that aggressive because those extra five seconds would have mattered. But um, I bet he's kicking himself right now after that. Wow. I'd be kicking Nick. Uh, and then <laughs> slowly I would move over to myself. But I would be like, you bald man. <laughs> oh, yeah. If only, yeah. What a what a wild one there. That I mean, the stand your ground. I know for a fact that DLL runs like at least four out of five stand your ground. So it, that wasn't just chance. I mean, there's a decent chance that he is going to do that based on masteries, which yeah. is a tactical move. Yeah, it is. Uh, wow. I I think though. I mean, as entertaining as that was, and very cool. I I think Kate is just going to tear through Wong, right? Yeah, I I have no idea how Scorpion is going to get this blade down. More so, but you know, Wong seven star Wong that has almost the amount of a rank five health and attack. Uh, one mistake and you're dead. So yeah, that's true. And, we'll and, have to see. And TJ is dangerously close to. He ends up getting the baiting the special two mm -hmm. there of Wong. So he did a nice job there. But uh, for anyone who's ever accidentally triggered Wong's heavy and then that power gain, you know the pain that comes with that. And DLL, uh, again, I'll bring this up. Poison does work. DLL knows that. So he, he specifically chose poison mode. And you're seeing that, you know, the, the healing is not as bad as we've seen with some other champions. Despair Mastery does not work in this meta, but poisons do. And slowly but surely, that health bar is going down. You know, uh, doesn't Wong have some energy resistance too, now that I think about it? I'll have to look it up, but I wouldn't be surprised. A lot of mystics do. One of yeah. his, um, I cannot recall what his phases or his passes are called, his stances. I believe one of them gives him uh, energy resistance. This is going to be close because there, there's still a lot of time left. A lot can happen here. Yeah, like I, I will say, I'll admit right now. I'm just hoping neither opponent, uh, competitor makes a mistake because I'd like to see their just natural skill and game knowledge be the difference here. Because right now, a mistake would really hurt either of them. Mm -hmm. So he does have a little bit of base energy resistance, and then I think you're right. One of the spells might also add some. Right, because TJ's uh, stream is a little bit ahead, we now know. Uh, there you go, folks. Unbelievable. The man who designs champions for the game knows more about it than I do. It's confirmed. Well done, DLL. <laughs> well, well done. This is what we talked about. This is the tactician side of this. And, you know, someone, I don't remember who, pointed out that that match versus Nick Fury, that's the exact scenario I talk about all the time in the third set. 
where that is the exact scenario where I've seen momentum shift so much. The person that's down comes out of a match that they felt like maybe they shouldn't have won. And then they see the screen and you can just see the momentum shift. Additionally, TJ had it. He sold out, you know, and it, he just couldn't finish off Fury. Fury holds on to the special three. Uh, TJ, I think, got in two additional heavies. I'm sure thinking one of them would finish him off. It doesn't. Fury resists the heavy special three. And so it would just be very natural for TJ to also be like, the game hates me. It's against me. I, I want to see how both of these guys handle this. They've both been very mentally tough so far. Yeah, wow. That that was incredible. And you've you basically predicted it <laughs> and you've talked about this before. Um and I think a a bit of a shout out to DLL for not using Scorpion in, in round 1 and picking I bomb for Rintra uh so that he had Scorpion for that third round. I bomb is not taking down that blade the way he did. So um just the whole thing was orchestrated so well by DLL. He got a little bit of a break on that Nick Fury but he definitely earned that third win and the strategy for the all three matches. So very impressive. Dude, that's a phenomenal point about uh, going back to when I was like, huh, I wonder why I didn't pick Scorpion. Well, I guess we now know. <laughs> yeah. And also the creating the opportunities. That's the thing I continue to see out of these players is they create their chances. They create the luck. It doesn't always go their way, but they create it time after time and time again and get these scores, 52, 53, 54,000, beating their opponents by these tiny margins. I, you know, the chat would be impossible to catch up on, so if I don't say your name, I apologize. But Shibby, what is up, dude? Julian, thank you for being here. King Moose, Captain Easy, Alberto, and more. Thanks for being here, everybody. Hope you're enjoying this one. So Hulkling has finally made an appearance, which has been... One of the reasons that uh, future Ant-Man has been such a problem on defense. Nobody's gotten their Hulkling. You know, the other thing I feel like I'm seeing here is, and I, I'm experiencing this as I'm moving up the uh, victory track in, in BGs when I get to play, is the seven stars, man. I, I guess it's the, uh, the champion rating and their health pool. They're just tough to fight. Yeah, they are. I, I mean, we're even seeing a, a spider one. Yeah, uh, I mean that Wong was just uh, he he just had a lot of health and and was very resilient, you know. So yeah. I, I think you're right in the last matchup, being a seven star that is. What's up, Q? I've seen you in the chat, buddy. I wanted to at least say hello. Uh, are we gonna see Toad? I had to fight a Toad the other day, and I could just not. I couldn't get him down. I didn't have a heal block champion or anything like that. Oh, obviously, it would have helped. Mm -hmm. But I could not get him down. It just wasn't going to happen. Uh, I believe that TJ has Nimrod, so I'm I'm almost wondering if Toad is an offensive play for for DLL. I'll have to we'll have to see. I feel like TJ's got to like his draft here. He it feels like he's got a lot of very powerful champions. He's got his hood. He's got some real natural defenders there. Havoc things like that. Yeah, he's got a lot of options for for defense and attack because, you know, you could throw Nimrod on defense if you need to. Um, but Toad, as long as Toad is over there, he's going to have to keep that Nimrod on reserve. Yeah. I want to see this Kate versus Quicksilver. She, her getting up that cold snap, I think will just turn off Quicksilver's evade, which for me is one of the most frustrating things about fighting him. You know, as the fight progresses, I often like struggle to remember, have I caused his evade recently? Is it safe to, to stun him and then tack in or do I have to trigger it again? It just, it just feels like that timer gets so tough to pay attention to. Oh yeah, for sure. I'm, I'm really excited to see that for sure. Let's see how it goes. I think doom versus abs man can work, but it's not the fastest thing in the world. He is obviously shock immune for right now. So DLL has to figure out other ways to land heavies. And looks like our cold snap is now up. Yeah. And TJ did and nail the perfect release. So that it's going to be the, uh, the increased damage. And then you're seeing the evade failed right there. This is really pretty. Look at that red damage. Yeah. 
that is i mean kate bishop am i right i mean what a champion she is a horse man that is a was that 50 seconds yeah man i i i think anyone who hasn't given a look to kate bishop needs to take a very serious look at that champion um man so anyone who's been polite and respectful and they should be and and doesn't give dl grief over his champions right he's designing them they're they're supposed to be difficult uh, for us i hope you enjoyed that right there uh, his own champion being used against him to destroy quicksilver and then accidentally sending absorbing man red and the sb3 animation just enjoy that moment, and then when you interact with him, be respectful, be polite. <laughs> His own creations are just turning against him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's, it's just crazy, man. <laughs> uh, yeah, and it's going to be tough with, like, still having Hercules, still having Galen, still having Hood. Yeah, I, I honestly, I, I look at these drafts and I think uh, TJ is coming away with this one. And it'll just be about, you know, the, the next set. Of course, you don't give up. You keep trying, which DL is mm -hmm. doing. But I, I, just looking at the drafts, it, it, uh, it feels If he like, goes Havoc, yeah. I guess Archangel could potentially win. Um, and then that would set up an interesting third round. But yeah, I'm, I'm curious who he's going to place right now. If he's going to try to just go for 2-0, or if he's going to try to be a little bit safer and save somebody for the third round. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. I, I mean, he's got Hood. Yeah, yeah, and, and you got to do what you got to do. I, when you were bringing up havoc, I was thinking potentially Hulkling takes it. Um, Hood, okay. I mean, Hood can be very, very quick here. Um, I, I have not seen Toad on attack, um, but again, the poisons we've talked about that before. I don't know how much they're going to do here. Yeah, I just uh, unless it's against a skill um, defender, I just I don't enjoy Toad. Uh, but I, yeah, it is rank five Toad though. I forgot, so there's a chance. Yeah. Got to be a little careful of pushing him red. Okay, Hulkling throws a special. Hood is good. This just in. Hood. Oh man, is good. Yeah. Uh, that's a ring four hood, correct? I believe so. Yeah. So TJ responds think... well to that. Yeah. Uh, he got the deck. He got the draft, and then he finishes it off, which is what you got to do. You get the opportunity. You got to finish it. I think I would have, if I were DLL, I might have done the risky thing of using Archangel here. I mean, yes, you get punished for throwing bleeds on Havoc, but. Once you get the neuros up, there's a chance that he goes down quickly. Because um, Toad, unfortunately, if he was if he was a skill champion, like you were saying, every time masochism procs, it turns into a passive poison. Um, but now with masochism, you just lose the poison. So and it's and, always, it's always oh sorry go ahead keep going. Yeah no that that was basically my whole point. You know it's it's easy to sit here for me to sit here and be like, I would have done this or I would have done that. You know, uh, I'm sure in the moment I wouldn't have. And, and a lot of you will probably tell me why this would have been a bad idea. I think I would have placed Wiccan on defense. Um, would Hood still have just torn through him? I don't know. No, uh, you know, I mean, it, it wouldn't have, it wouldn't have, it would have, even if it worked, it still wouldn't have in the end because then TJ could have placed number. I really think that, I really think that the drafts, this one was kind of decided already. Yeah, yeah, you're right. And we did kind of notice that even in round one. Yeah. It, it was just a, a monster draft yeah. for uh, for TJ. Yeah. Here we go. All right, it's 3-1. Good luck with uh, the, the grind, uh, MHD. I, I hope you get him.
It appears as though TJ may have needed to take a little break here. Oh, they're back on it. Definitely hurts um, that DLL's two two of his rank fives are are banned. Yeah, permanently here. Um, you know, I'm sure there were a few times that if he if he was able to use Kate or something, he would have uh, had slightly better matchups. Um, now this is he's still going with Joe. Yeah, so he has not changed. The bands have been consistent the whole time. I think he's got to take Sunspot here. Goes with I bomb. TJ's deck is fierce. It really is. It's almost like he really uh, ranks for battlegrounds or something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it. Yeah, I mean, just watching this, you're like, wait, this man has three. He has five champions banned, and it, it still looks like this. Yeah, exactly. It's like we don't even need to watch your uh, battlegrounds tier list. It's just like. Take a look at the lower half of the screen, and they're all there. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it, uh, man. Basically, what I do is I just look at TJ's uh, battlegrounds deck, and then I make my tier list based on that. <laughs> uh, Sweet is here. What's up, buddy? Uh, I appreciate you commenting on the Titania video today. Uh, that was fun, and I appreciate you being here. All right, so Crossbones is for Thing. And he's sticking with the rank five Toad. I'm un I'm un it's unfortunate we haven't seen Sunspot yet. I have, I have such a soft spot for Sunspot. <laughs> um, but he's so fast, even with Masochism, like just one special one, maybe two special ones and a special two. He's getting down a lot of opponents. And isn't that just the way it always works where, you know, you wait, you wait, you wait, and then you like, it's your last draft. You're like, I'm taking Toad or I'm taking Domino. And then of mm -hmm. course your opponent gets Nimrod. Like it's just, it is, Oh yeah. it's like the game is programmed to do that. Yeah. Yeah. The odds are never in your favor when it comes to this stuff. It's like Murphy's rule is always in effect. Yeah. Okay, these look interesting to me. With the last minute switch to Gallon. I, I guess wanted to save Kate for something else here, huh? Mm-hmm. When you use Gallon, do you like how do you try to just do one giant burst or do you are you more of like do a couple harvests and get it down? Like what's your gallon strategy usually? You know what? I, I, I gotta say, I, I think I'm currently and it's all relative. I've made the uh I've made the gladiator circuit every time. It's just a matter of like when I have the time to sit down and really play. So it's all relative. Uh I but I think on a comparative level to you know, especially the people in this tournament and you all, uh, I'm terrible. And, and as a result, one of the things that's, uh, I mean, that was beautiful by TJ, is one of the things that makes it so that I'm terrible is just the lack of inconsistency. Because sometimes we're like, oh, you know what? I'm going to do the SP1 style. I saw FinTech do that a few tournaments mm -hmm. ago. And, and so I, 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 I don't know, ultimately, as, as I'm wildly inconsistent. And, and it shows when I play. Well, whatever TJ did, um, I, <laughs> yeah. I think, you know, Gallon kind of has a rap of being like a cheat code, but you really kind of need to know how much damage your harvest is going to do and when to throw it at the perfect time. And the fact that he one shot thing with a harvest shows that he knew what he what how to do that. And I mean, this Quicksilver 
is going to end with a lot of health. It just wasn't fast enough once again. He's going for the, the finishing blow, but it's, yeah, it is enough. Yeah. I mean, really beautiful Quicksilver fight up there. Like, that's that's how you fight Mojo with Quicksilver. I love it. Um, but Gallon, man, that was wild. I, I think the way TJ's playing right now, this is, it is, is as impressive as it gets in these tournaments. I'm not saying it's the best yeah. we've seen, but I'm saying it's in there. It's in that tier. This is like happy, uh, happy the other day. You know, we often see fintech do this sort of thing. McLinx was playing exceptionally well. Um, I think it's just as good as it gets. I mean, he is in the zone. Yeah. In a, I mean, and I've seen him like this before, and it, it is one of the scariest things that I've ever seen in your tournament when TJ is just on fire like this. So, I mean, um, just incredible, incredible play. I, I don't think this is over though. Let's see here. Uh, Crossbones, you know, he'll probably shrug those whiplash like we just saw, which is going to get the, his furies Lots going. Furies, yeah. He ideally doesn't need to place debuffs. I mean, I guess he does shut off the ability accuracy at some point. Yeah, he should he should be stopping the evade most of the time. Um you know, he'll he'll be shrugging everything. Um it, it's gonna kinda depend like how like Kate's Kate's already cooking here with her cold snap. Um Yeah. It, it's gonna be a little bit of a race to the finish here. I, I actually don't know who's gonna win this one. And I think it's looking very close right now. Yeah, I think Quicksilver's tough to Evade animations may end up being the difference here because it looks like they're going to finish the fight around the same amount of time. And Crossbones will have just lost health where Kate will not have, thanks to that uh, riposte, I think mm -hmm. it's called, and and some really nice play by TJ, really taking it home. It ends up being a close score, uh, but we can see it there. I, you know, I I think DL played well. And I think he, he, he oh, yeah. strategized very well. We saw that in the round that, that, he, uh, that he took there. I think this was about TJ, though. I think this was about TJ uh, just making a statement. You know, in the draft show we talked about, or what I wanted to see out of TJ was him kind of taking the attitude of, they got to play me. You know, uh, often we'll hear like, oh, I got to play McLinks. I got to play Nick136. I got to play Happy. I got to play FinTech. I got to play Legacy. And I think, I think if TJ harnesses they got to play him, you know? <laughs> uh, I think we'll continue to see results like this. It's just, Diallo played well, one of the best players in the world. TJ is just a force to be reckoned with. It, it, there's just, there's not much more you can say or do about it. Yeah, that was just a fantastic show um, by both competitors, like you said. But um, TJ just just put the pressure on early and never released. Uh, I mean, it was it was just a wild show there. So I, hopefully, he comes to join us and uh, we can we can pick his brain a little bit about that that amazing performance. Hello, you, you, you there, buddy? I'm here. Yeah, yeah. So uh, I don't know how much you were able to hear there, but one of the things we were just saying is DLL actually played well, and he really had some great oh, yeah. strategies there, uh, and yet. This felt like you really harnessed that idea that I was talking about in the draft show, where it's like, I'm Tom Jarvis. I'm TJ. They got to play me. And you just look like a freight train out there, unstoppable. Uh, did you feel that from, from the moment that the match started? After the first round, I will say, yeah, I did. Yeah. But that, that, it was really that Hood versus Future Ant-Man fight that did it. I thought, you know what, this is game on. Do you mind talking us through that? Because uh, it, it, I did not think the matchup was going to go well, and it clearly did. Do you mind telling us what the strategy is there, or is that a, is that a, a secret you want to keep? You'll let us know after the tournament's over. No, no. Um, basically, Hood has an ability extra reduction on his special two. I think it's sixty five percent, and he staggers the the buffs and fate seals the buffs. So. 
you'll barely see the glancing because one, there's no buffs, two, they can barely apply because of the ability, ability accuracy reduction. And then you just stack on the hex, keep him, or ideally keep him at high power, keep power stealing while you're invisible. Spam special twos, get as many hex bullets up as you can. And then they all detonate individually, so it bypasses the damage cap. Okay. That's oh, yeah. insane, because, I mean, everyone should know by now that, you know, Gallon versus Future Ant-Man, the harvest will get capped. I think yeah. that's so interesting with Hood that I, it doesn't work that same way. Yes, yeah, because uh, with Gallon, it's all one big burst. With Hood, it's right. each bullet detonating individually. Very interesting. I learned Does that something make sense? today. <laughs> yeah, that's great. Mm. Uh, well, your prize for this win is that you will play again in week two. Uh, I will flip the coin right yeah. now. You'll be going up against B. McG. I'll flip the coin. TJ is heads. B. McG is tails. TJ, it actually lands heads. So you will be doing the invite to B. McG. I'll put that up in the line po uh, line chat. But just so you know, you will be um, up against B. McG. So go ahead and contact him. Campo, did you have any questions for TJ? Um, not necessarily a question, but just just a, uh, a comment that, I mean, we've already seen Kate Bishop just steamroll in this tournament um and you used her so effectively in so many matchups do you have any any words you'd like to say about uh how you're enjoying using kate bishop since you pulled her i want to give a massive thank you to dll <laughs> yeah yeah I, I, that's, that's about it a lot also of us a massive... go sorry, for it I, I didn't mean to interrupt you i, I jumped into this pause too early. please please carry on uh, sorry about that um yeah G's used to DLL as well. I'm not sure if I said that yet, but I could tell he played incredibly. And that's the most I've ever had to think in a Battlegrounds match. Like he, he really made me earn that. Absolutely. Uh, we'll relay the message in case he, you know, you talk to him. Are you in the same alliance with him? Do you have ways to communicate with DLL? Uh, I, I could try and figure that out. Yeah, yeah. Um, I could figure a way around that. Uh, this, uh, there was a specific question by someone named Bitter Steel, it looks like, uh, and they were asking kind of what you were thinking um, the fight with Kate versus Wong. Not so much like bad idea, more how'd that go? They, it did not go as well as I thought it might. Yeah, I'll be honest, that was just an oversight. Uh, with Wong, I completely forgot about the um, the mode where he can just regen all energy damage. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, going in, I just didn't think about that. Very fair. Uh, we just got a, a donation. I, sorry, I'm going to take a second to recognize. Thank you, Big D. I'll actually leave that up because we'll be ending the stream soon. So I'll leave that up. It'll be up for the next matchup. Uh, yes, I do still have an active uh, Discord server, uh, quite a few people on it. And we'll get the link here in a second and put that there if you're interested in joining. Uh, TJ, anything else you, you want to say, man? I mean, I, honestly, if you came out on fire, and I, I don't think there was much that could have possibly stopped you today. Except for Nick yeah. Fury's uh, resisting your heavy. <laughs> that was a moment. I was about to say that. that yeah. <laughs> as well, if that heavy had connected. Oh. Yeah, that was a but moment. Yeah. Uh, I think you'll enjoy going back and watching the, the commentating for that, that moment of the turning. Oh, I'm definitely going to. Be yeah, other than GG's to DLL, there's not much more for me to say. All right. Well, uh, I think that's all we got. I will put the link to the Discord server invite in the chat here. I tried to do it. It just wasn't working. Phenomenal showing by DLL. I know he had to get off, uh, get to work. He often ends his streams throughout that time, so he can hurry up and get to work. And uh, TJ, I mean, like I said, I, I this was as good as it gets. Uh, I hope you continue it through the tournament. It was really a force and a delight to see. Campo, thank you so much for uh, hosting with me today. Everyone in the chat, thanks for being here. It's a blast. You're one of the major reasons why it is so much fun. Thank you to OG Highline and Big D for the support. I always appreciate it. Let's go ahead and go Campo and then uh, Mr. Jarvis to take us out. Well, yeah, thanks, Vega. Congrats, TJ. It was a pleasure watching you play today, and good luck in the rest of the tournament. Yeah, thank you for having me, Vega. Thank you, Campo for helping cover and for the kind words and thank you everyone for watching and supporting have a great one out there everyone we'll be back uh, i hope tomorrow might not be tomorrow could be friday keep an eye on mine and all the competitors channels for the next matchup as we work into week two of battle world
Take care.